Usually when African Americans come to Africa, they go to places of sorrow, places where their ancestors were placed aboard ships for the middle voyage to the Americas. It's time to discover a new Africa. Time to come and honor our ancestors, connect with our past, and celebrate the unique strength and history of our true heritage. And there's no better place to start that journey than right here in Cape Verde. Cape Verde Cape Verde is different from other countries. You won't find another similar nation in Cape Verde anyway. Now you know from South America, Africa, Middle East, or Asia. We are a synthesis of many cultures, including European, African, and American. Being a country of cultural synthesis gives us the possibility to communicate with the world. Folklore suggests that this archipelago of ten islands was visited by the Phoenicians and Moors centuries before the arrival of Europeans. Africans braved dangerous waters to come over from the west coast of Africa to mine the salt here on the island of Saul in Cape Verde. I'm on the island of Saint Vicente, known for its natural deep water harbor. Ships going to and from Europe have passed through this port for centuries. In 1460, seafaring adventurers in the service of Portugal claimed the Cape Verde Islands. The Europeans, uh, when they arrived here, had to adapt. To Saint Vicente. Saint Vicente was the most difficult island to colonize. The travelers adapted and they stayed here to learn our language. This is the gateway to the city of Ribera Grande, the first city established by the Europeans outside of Europe. Christopher Columbus had yet been given credit for discovering the New World when this city was inhabited. The legendary Sir Francis Drake attacked this city several times. They later built this fort, the Fort of Sao Felipe, to protect it from the many attackers, countries, and pirates. Up to and during the 19th century, San Vicente was the island where the pirates would hide to attack the ships coming from the south, India, or from Brazil. They needed water and food, and sometimes they would stay in the island for months hunting, fishing, and so on. San Vicente has been a major port of call for many historical voyages to the New World. In 1607, three English ships stopped in San Vicente before crossing the Atlantic to establish the first colony in Jamestown, Virginia, which would later become America. This is Rua Banana. This street is one of the first concepts of urbanization built outside of Europe. It was built by the Spanish and Portuguese back in the early 15th century. There were over 500 houses built in this style. After the islands were colonized, thousands of Africans were brought over to work as slaves on Portuguese plantations. Portugal's plan was to saddle Saint Vicente with the Portuguese only. But Creoles, for the lack of better term, the Africans that was born in Cape Verde, settled the northern part of the island. Together with the Portuguese, we developed the island. On the island of Santiago, here at Pelourinho, the Portuguese gave birth to modern-day slavery. On this very spot in this small village, the business of selling Africans to the New World was perfected. This post was used to punish all those who rebelled against the system. They've been making rum here in the Cape Verde Islands for over 500 years. Using this process and sugarcane to make rum was later exported to the New World. Cuba, the Caribbean, and across Brazil gained great wealth using this process along with the human labor of Africans. Fogo, the Fire Island. I'm standing in a crater on one of the highest peaks in Africa, second only to Mount Kilimanjaro. This active volcano last erupted in 1995. This village of approximately 100 people is a major tourist attraction here on Fogo. These people, despite the occasional eruption, live here and refuse to move. They have soccer field and restaurants. I think the word fearless comes to mind. Here in the village of Portela, inside this active crater, you'll find some of the best wines made in Africa. The success of Cape Verde, in my view, is based on her rich history. 
Her orange. Her origin e mas que Cabo Verde, Cabo Verde é um is a small pequenino, country, mas but she has a vast grasp. When we analyze Cape Verde's success, we must consider both sides. Cape Verdeans living in Cape Verde and the diaspora communities in the West, Europe, Africa, and South America. Uh, it's together that we have achieved this development we enjoy today. Cape Verde understands that in today's world of globalization, the winners will be those societies which are best prepared. In my view, it demands from the leaders two qualities, patience and perseverance. Things don't happen in one day. With its peaceful, stable government, its adaptable people, and its rich cultural tradition, Cape Verde endeavors to lead the way in its effort to redefine the image of modern-day Africa. I'm Tim Reed, and I invite you to come to Cape Verde and enjoy the jewel of Africa.